Hello YouTube. Today I'm going to present this new project and the project idea. My idea is to build a so-called quadcopter and my idea is to use this STM F4 discovery kit. So I bought a couple of these development boards. Uh, very, they are very cheap but very powerful. They use this STM F4 uh, microprocessor running uh, 168 megahertz. It is a Cortex M4 processor with a floating point unit which I thought would be a great idea for this project as I am going to do a lot of floating point math. So uh, I then also bought some sensors, so called IMUs, and uh, these IMUs are used to control uh, and regulate the quadcopter. I'm going to find these now. Sorry. Uh, these IMUs are from SparkFun. This is the 9 of 9 degrees of freedom IMU, the 9 of stick. I decided to use the 9 of stick instead of the 9 of racer which is a uh, it's the same it's a 9 degrees of freedom uh, board but it comes with an Atmega processor on board so it can do the calculations but I decided just to buy this 9 of stick which contains as you can see a 3 axis accelerometer uh, <laughs> a 3 axis accelerometer a 3 axis gyro, gyro and a 3 axis magnetometer uh, to explain in short uh, what these are and the terms, the accelerometer measures acceleration and not gravity as some might think, but as gravity uh, will uh, create a force, a force vector, uh, it will create uh, some kind of acceleration too. So when this board is put in this, we can see that the set axis is going this way. So when this is hold like that, the z-axis will uh, contain a value equals to 1 g as the acceleration on the z-axis will be one uh, equal to 1 g. And now, as we can see, that is the y-axis, the y will now be 1 g. So that is actually uh, useful for measuring the angle because you can use the accelerometer and the uh, gravity, the earth gravity, to measure how this board is oriented. Now the problem occurs that when this board moves, if the board moves, and it might uh, be moving on a quadcopter which is a four propelled plane, this board uh, will be moving and there will occur some kind of acceleration. Then the accelerometer will be unstable and you wouldn't be able to calculate the angle properly. That is why you use a gyroscope. The gyroscope uh, sensor measures angle velocity. This means uh, degrees per uh, second. So this, uh, most of the times, it's either degrees or radians per second. And as you can see, the y-axis is this way. So when I'm turning this like, whoops, when I'm turning it like this, uh, now it will the gyro y-axis will be larger, and now it will be equal to zero. As I stopped, now it will be negative, and if I rotate it quickly, it will be more negative. So. The gyroscope is used to measure the angle velocity. And if I combine the gyroscope and the accelerometer, I can actually get a pretty decent um, angle. Because if the accelerometer, uh, if this board is moved, so the acceleration is more than only the gravity, the gyro gyroscope will take care of this as the gy gyroscope only measures the rotation. So by combining these two, I can actually get a very precise roll and pitch uh, angle measurement. But then we have the problem, what about the so-called yaw, which is rotation against its own 
uh, axis, in this case the C axis. The great thing here is the gyroscope also, as this is a 9 duff gyroscope, it, the gyroscope also has uh, C axis measurement. But the problem is here we have the problem with the accelerometer which will accelerate when the board is moving but we also have a problem with the gyroscope as this board, uh, the gyroscope will drift so if I turn it and then stop it wouldn't always return to zero saying the angle velocity is zero degrees per second now. So that is why you also combine an accelerometer and a gyroscope to stabilize the two things. But the problem is the accelerometer can't measure the angle around its own axis because now the C, as I said, uh, the C axis will measure 1G but if I rotate it over here it will still measure 1G. And that is why we are using the so-called magnetometer. Uh, the magnetometer is actually a compass chip measuring the orientation against uh, the magnetic north. So because this is a 3 axis it's because it can measure the uh, North Pole orientation, whether in which state and rotation this board is aligned. So by combining the previous found roll and pitch values with this X, Y and Z magnetometer value, we can actually get the precise uh, angle of the North Pole. And with that angle, we can combine it with the C axis of the gyroscope to get a precise value of the board oriented against the plane, against the vertical, the so-called yaw measurement. So my idea is to use this stick together with the STM F4 development board and also using a so-called barometric pressure sensor, also from SPAC Fun, uh, the BMP uh, 80, uh, 085. Uh, and use this to measure the altitude because this board combines all the three sensors to measure the so-called attitude. Attitude is the orientation and altitude is the height above sea level. So uh, this board will be used to measure the, 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 yeah, the height above the sea level though the barometric uh, pressure isn't changing a lot in the lower fields so it's only changing when you get higher so I might be using an ultrasonic sensor anyway to measure the distance. Okay, so that's my idea and uh, therefore I uh, have hooked it up. You can watch this, it's a complete mess. But uh, uh, the Arduinos here isn't actually used right now. These have been used for testing some wireless connectivity as I would like to communicate with my Quapcopter 2. So this is just an uh, NRF module. Uh, but uh, let's forget that at the moment because now let's focus on this this is the STM F4 as I just shown you and uh, I have made a breadboard where I can hook up the 9 dot board like that so uh, now when that's hooked up let's power up the board and uh, see what code as I've uh, made some code for this board to uh, communicate, this board is using uh, I square C. I made some driver code to read the values from the all three sensors, and I also made some code to combine these sensors because it requires uh, a, a special algorithm to combine these and to make it stable. There are different uh, routines and the algorithms you can use. Uh, the extended Kalman filter is one of them, which is a good uh, reference point to start at. But I decided to go with the so-called direct cosine matrix, which is a matrix calculation algorithm that uh, works pretty well. And uh, I got some very decent results. Uh, with some help from the AHRS community, the so-called attitude heading reference system, uh, for the Arduino, I uh, use some of their uh, algorithm routines and uh, ported them to the STM32 and uh, I got it working and together with their IDE, let's have a look on the computer on how this algorithm works and uh, which uh, output it gives. Now I have connected the board to the computer. 
I've connected a USB port, uh, USB cable to the uh, STM F4 just for programming and debugging purpose. And I've connected the UART3 here, the RX and TX line, to a uh, yeah, just a USB to uh, UART converter. And uh, now on the computer screen, I've started the AHRF, the Racer AHRF uh, application processing application which is just a uh, demonstration of the output data uh, that the computer receives and then it makes a graphical representation. Now when I pick up the board you'll see that uh, I can move it around and it will do the same on the computer screen and I can also move it around the the yaw as I told you about before because of the magnetometer and the gyroscope and then I can tilt it in both ways and it will get the output as you can see in the bottom of the screen it displays the angles in degrees now this is around 90 you can see 90 and it's around minus 90 and also in the other way and this is working as I said with the STMF4 board and with this 9 off uh, board from SparkFun. It's a board for around uh, $100. Uh, dollars. So it's uh, not that uh, cheap, I would say, but it's a great board because it, uh, has, uh, it has all the sensors, all the required sensors, and it uh, makes a great uh, combination with my project as the quadcopter. Someone would also uh, prefer to use only a 6 stuff which excludes the excludes the magnetometer then you wouldn't be able to make the same yaw measurement uh, you would be able to make some yaw measurement but it will be drifting a bit but for sure it will be be possible to combine it with the gyros and make some kind of stable because the great thing about also these uh, either the Cal extended Kalman filter or the direct cosine matrix is that you get a so-called bias value and the bias value is actually the gyroscope offset so you can use the uh, current and the, the bias value is uh, calculated all the time and you can use this bias value to uh, re-zero the gyroscope so you can actually when you move the board you can actually just use the gyroscope the re-zero gyroscope values to get the your representation but again it will still drift a bit and you might see also here that when I rotate it quickly it gets back to place. The magnetometer can also be uh, be disorientated by magnetics or some kind other kind of metal so this is uh, a, a down a minus for the magnetometer but I, I find it very good and uh, also upside down it uh, works as it should So now that I got yeah, the sensors to work, or I only got the orientation sensor to work, it was time for me to plan the project and especially how the quadcopter should uh, look like. So uh, I decided to make some drawings in uh, yeah, 3ds Max. I've sh might, I should have uh, used uh, some kind of uh, other software. But uh, I decided to to make them uh, in 3ds Max. It might be have been a better fit to use Autodesk or, or uh, Autodesk uh, AutoCAD or Inventor. But uh, anyways, I used uh, 3ds Max. So uh, let's have a look at the drawings. As I said, I decided to make a 3D design of the Quadcopter project. I decided to make this design to make the production and manufacturing of the different materials uh, easier to make a bomb list not just for the electronics but especially also for the mechanical parts so uh, I decided to use 3ds Max which might not have as I said been the best fit but okay I have uh, some good experience with 3ds Max so uh, here you see the 3D uh, presentation of the quadcopter and uh, I'll just uh, make a three walkthrough of the dif different uh, parts. I uh, 
designed it to uh, to be a, a, a larger one, but uh, also this uh, design might give you an idea of what a quadcopter really is. In short terms, a quadcopter is a uh, helicopter, but with uh, four rotors, with four propellers. And as you see, uh, the four propellers is uh, connected on four arms to a center piece. And uh, I decided to make these arms in a length of uh, around 60 centimeters. Uh, sorry, 30 centimeters, making it around 60 centimeters from motor to motor. I decided to go with the so called uh, 1045 propellers, which is uh, propellers that has a diameter of uh, 10 inch. This equals to 20, around 25 centimeters. Uh, which makes a radi radius of around uh, 13 centimeters. So when this is 30, uh, I think this is 31 to the center, uh, it uh, requires uh, 13 centimeters in. So if I, uh, I can show you how this looks like when I mount the propolis, uh, the propolis will fill in like this and require this amount of space. So there's no problem with the propolis hitting the the center plate. And uh, the center plate is uh, built by uh, two 20 by 20 centimeters uh, plywood plates. I, uh, dis I decided to use uh, wood as the material. This is uh, going to be uh, some aluminium square rails as this will make uh, the weight more or less. So as you can see some hollow square rails this is 15 by 15 millimeter square, well, square rails with a, uh, a 2 millimeter thickness. But uh, the center plates are uh, in plywood around uh, 7 millimeter in uh, width, in thickness, sorry and uh, 20 by 20 centimeters and then I'm going to use, uh, as you can see here, I'm going to use two bolts to bolt this uh, square rail to the the center plate. So uh, this will hold the the bolts, uh, no sorry, the square rails in place and then I'm also going to uh, make a separate board for the electronics. This will have a plywood uh, as smaller in thickness, I I think I'm going to use uh, uh, oh I th I think five millimeters, four or five millimeters plywood, and this is only going to be 13 by 13 centimeters, and this is going to be uh, uh, lifted above the design with some uh, standoffs, but uh, it it would be best if this is some kind of uh, rubber standoffs, so the vibra vibrations will be minimal, because on the bottom here, this green board, uh, there will be the IMU, uh, the sensors, uh, both the IMU, the 9 off, and also the barometric pressure sensor. And on the top, we see this uh, board here. This is the STM F4 board with the USB connector that connects into uh, a uh, some kind of peripheral board that just has some uh, connectors for the different things. This uh, example, for example, a connector down to the sensor board, uh, connected to Bluetooth module to the NRF uh, RF module, um, connected to ultrasonic sensor to GPS and uh, etc. So. Um, this is actually the the representation of the of my idea, and also a great sketch of the the sizes required. So uh, I also m decided to make a let's see, I'll just find this to make a calculation of the weight of the frame, and this is in Danish, sorry. But uh, here we have the this should say six millimeter instead, the six millimeter frame. Uh, we have two pieces by uh, 200 by 200 millimeters. This will uh, give a total of 230 grams. We have the other electronics board. Currently, I set it to six millimeters. Uh, another 50 gram. 
We have the aluminium square rails, it will be 205 grams. Then we have the battery, motors and ESCs. Here I haven't calculated the weight of the electronics, STM4 and IMUs and such. But uh, without that, the total weight of the quadcopter would be uh, around uh, 1400 uh, grams. And if I go into the calculator of the, now I open my browser, the calculator of, uh, uh, sorry, I'll just have to find this, the eCalc, I think, yep. This eCalc, it's called for multicopters. I can uh, calculate the required thrust and battery, etc. And uh, I'll fill in the different things because I decided to to go with uh, to, to to choose some different materials, and I decided to go with a th five thousand milliamps lipo battery, uh, twenty five uh, C, which is the discharge rate, and thirty five C uh, in burst. Uh, I'll make a short comment on this uh, lipo battery uh, discharge rate statement, as uh, this C values is used to explain how fast uh, you can discharge these LiPo batteries. So in my example I have a 5000 milliamps hours uh, battery with 25C and if I go into a calculator and put this in uh, by hour and then uh, instead of the hour I remove the hour and I just type in the C value which is 25 I get a total amount in amps which I can discharge. So uh, with this battery I am able to uh, to discharge up to 125 amps of current. Where if I discharge it with 125 amps, uh, then I can, by using that, uh, divide it by 100. Uh, sorry, I have to hours too, and then divide it with 125 amps, I get 145 seconds, which is equal to 2.4 minutes. So if I discharge it with the maximum rate, not the burst rate, because this will damage the battery if you do it uh, in a long term, uh, the battery will be discharged in uh, 2.4 minutes. So when that's uh, put in, it's uh, three serial batteries uh, in parallel, making, uh, it, it making 11.1 uh, volt. Uh, I'm using a 30 amps controller, I'm using the Turnergy Plus 30 amp, and I'm using a Turnergy motor, the 227, uh, with uh, 16 turns, the uh, 1050 uh, kV rating, which is the, the Tokyo. Uh, the KV rating, I'll make a comment on that, is, as you can see here, also the rounds per minute per volt. So, in my example, when I'm using a battery with uh, 3.7 volt per cell, as I said, I have three cells at 3.7 volt, we have 11.8 volt, and if I multiply that with the rating of my motor, the 1050 RPMs per volt, Sorry, I get, uh, I'll just remove this per volt, I'll get 11,655 rounds per minute. If I divide this by uh, 60 seconds, I'll get 195 rounds per second. So around 200 rounds per second uh, at maximum speed. And uh, last but not least, I've also decided to use some kind of propeller. As I told you, the diameter was 10 inch and the pitch is the... I, I decided to go with 1045. The pitch is uh, how much the propellers are uh, leaning. And those were 4.5 inch. And I'm using two blades, it's uh, propellers, not three or four. Now I can calculate uh, some different things with this uh, great e -calc, uh, x copter calculator. And we'll see that uh, the maximum load from our battery will only be 9.3 C, so we have a lot to give off up to the 25. Uh, the maximum current uh, per motor 
please be aware this is per motor, is 15 amps and multiply this by uh, uh, at maximum multiply this by 3 and then we have around 60 amps and as we calculated before we can go up to 125 so there's a lot of to give off uh, still. Uh, at Hoover uh, the uh, co uh, quadcopter, sorry I have to put in the weight too you can see it increases. The The current will be around uh, 7 amps uh, for hoovering. So this is around, as you will also see in uh, over here, let me see where it is. Um, boom, boom. It's somewhere, you can see this, is, this gives 20 amps for hoover and we can also see that it requires 70% uh, throttle to hoover. Hoover. Uh, that might be a bit uh, too much, but still, uh, if I can still go up to, let's say, two kilos, uh, not inclusive, boom, 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 I could before. Anyways, uh, to 1800. Nope, I can't. So uh, uh, this might require some changes if I add some uh, some weight. Because as you can say, uh, see, this program also gives a good idea of uh, what you can do if it's possible to, to maneuver. So uh, it, it actually gives a pretty good uh, idea of what you're capable of doing with your project. I would be able, if I would like to have 1800 grams inclusive drive, etc, etc, blah blah blah, I could also decide to use some other propellers. I could, for example, go to 12 and 5. I think it is. And then it will say, whoa, 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 please be aware that the current for the motors is over. So I would have to go with some other uh, motors too. But if I go to 11 uh, in uh, diameter, I would actually be able to, to do it with 1800. What about 2000? And then, as you can see here with uh, this calculator, you are uh, you're able to get some uh, good uh, and reasonable uh, values that you can use for your determination of the project extent. So uh, that was a short intro to how I uh, decided to design this and uh, how this is going to, to to go. That's up to me now. So uh, the great thing is I've actually uh, made some of the, I built some of the designs. So uh, Instead of using the aluminium square, square rails, because uh, these are first coming in about a week, I decided to uh, go with some MDF uh, plates that I cut out for these, and uh, I'll actually make uh, a prototype. So let's have a look on, uh, on that. Some of you might have noticed an uh, error in my uh, calculations before that I just showed to you, and uh, I also thought, wait, wait a minute, there's something wrong here because I made these calculations before and it uh, went uh, okay with the, around the 2 kilo weight. And that was actually because I forgot to set the rotors to 4. Now if I set the rotors to 4 and the quadcopter weight, then let's have a look at the throttle. Now the throttle is only 50%, so at Hoover it will only require the throttle to be around 50%, which is great. There's a lot to give off. So uh, let's uh, turn this up to 2000 grams, calculate again, and we'll see that the throttle is only 77% and there's no warning. So I would definitely be able to go up to 2000 kilos and that is uh, an increase of 600 grams from the current design. So uh, that would uh, be, for example, uh, a battery, another battery, so uh, 5000 milliamps more. Because also if we look at the flight time, at Hoover, I will be able to, with 2,000 uh, grams, I will be able to fly in 8 minutes with a 5,000 milliamps battery. So that's actually wrong because currently it weights uh, 1,400. So that's around 14 minutes. But now if I add up, so I have the, the double, we say 2 in parallel, and it weights 2,000. The battery time is 16 minutes, so that's not much of an increase. But uh, still, it's uh, it's some. So we're uh, just to 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 recheck on these calculations. So now let's have a look on the current prototype I made. So uh, I decided to order the motors from a shop in China called Hobby King. 
Hobby King is a shop that contains a lot of different stuff and materials for building RC uh, things, helicopters, uh, RC cars, etc. So uh, I uh, packed up a good uh, list, uh, a good order at them with uh, five motors. I only require four, but uh, if some of them uh, is bad or go uh, goes bad, if the copter crashes, I can also always replace them. So uh, this is the so-called brushless motors. Brushless motors are different from from normal RC, uh, not not RC, sorry, DC motors, because these contains magnetics. As you might be able to see in here, we have small magnetics in the sides. You can see when I move this, we have some magnets uh, in the outer can, and in the middle. In the center of this this brushless motor, we have uh, some uh, inductors, a lot of different inductors. And uh, the special thing about these motors is that they can be controlled at a very very high speed, and there is almost no uh, uh, what's that called lack? I don't know. Uh, in these motors, as it it, it doesn't there's uh, any mechanical touch because uh, yeah, they actually hovers uh, on top of these uh, inductors. You can see there's space between. So uh, these are great uh, motors for high-speed uh, designs. And as I would like to run this around the 11,000 rounds per minute, uh, as they can do, this uh, that is great for uh, my quadcopter. And then I have my battery, this CB5000 milliamps battery. It comes with a uh, special uh, connector and a charging um, stabilizing battery stabilizing cable that connects to a charger I decided to buy this Ac uh, Acucel 6 also from Turnergy which is a um, simple battery charger that requires uh, yeah, a decent amount of uh, current to charge but uh, the great thing about this is that it can actually charge this 5000 milliamps battery in uh, about an hour. Uh, I used a uh, 12 volt uh, power supply from a PC to uh, supply this with enough current. It was able to deliver 12 amps. And uh, by that, this I could read on the display. It uh, charges around 4.6 to 5 amps into the battery all the time so that's also around one hour to fill it out so uh, that's a great charger so what's uh, what's else in here yeah we have this uh, <coughs> this uh, programming card and this programming card is uh, for the motors now the ESC's and then you think what is the ESC's the ESC's are some kind of motor controller because of the uh, the motor and how this works this works by three wires connected to the uh, inductors inside here this needs to be controlled and it also needs a very high current so that's where this uh, ESC uh, is coming handy and this is the Turnergy Plush 30 amps and you provide it with, the, with power from the battery the 11.2 volt is fine. It can go up to, as you see, can go up to 16.8 uh, volt. And then you connect these uh, three wires to the motor. And then it comes with this simple servo cable with uh, 5 volt supply too, uh, that you can simply hook up to a micro uh, controller or such, and uh, control the the data or the PVM wire, which is actually uh, a uh, PPM signal to control the speed. Uh, this board contains a, a yeah many uh, act actually it contains a lot of uh, H um, yeah MOSFETs MOSFETs connected in uh, some kind of H bridge, and then it uh, it also contains an uh, a microprocessor because this needs to be drived at a high frequency to make the required turns for the motor. And uh, that is also where this programming card comes in handy, 
handy because uh, you have some different, because this has the, a microcontroller, it has different options to set, as you can see, brake, battery type, cutoff type, uh, etc. The cutoff type is handy if some thing happens with the microcontroller, it uh, just shuts off the power to the motors so they will stop driving. And then you also have some music, uh, etc. So that is, that is handy if you need to change some settings. And uh, that's almost it. We have some servo cables and a small 500 milliamps battery. And th these are very, very inexpensive from Hobby King, so that's uh, a great uh, deal. Um, and some more cables, more motors, etc. So uh, that's almost the order from uh, Hobby King. And uh, you might have noticed this prototype in the background. Let's move every anything else away. And you'll see how this uh, looks here with the configuration. I've just mounted one motor and a propeller. And uh, let's move that propeller so you can see how long it goes in. And there's uh, plenty of space to, to give. Uh, so uh, that is one of the motors mounted to this uh, configuration. We have the bolts, and we have the the liftoffs, and then we have the the top plate. And as you might notice, I've also made the electronics board. Uh, in Eagle, I designed uh, two boards. I designed them uh, to uh, fit together on this center plate. On the bottom we have the sensor board with a connector and this connector cable goes up to this board connects in uh, yeah like that and uh, and then it uh, connects the STM32 in uh, all these uh, female headers there and there and then it uh, contains some other different female headers for for example ultrasonic for GPS, for Bluetooth, for NRF, and then it also contains a buzzer and uh, a 5 uh, volt power supply because when I connect this to some kind of battery, it could be the 500 milliamps or something, or even the 11.7 volt, 5000 milliamps, it uh, drives the STM F4 uh, through its uh, 5 volt input. So uh, that's the prototype for now, and uh, I'm very excited to get it uh, get it up and running, connecting the other motors to the the mount, and uh, to make it easy for testing, I've actually drilled a hole in each end, and that's a great uh, thing of this wood. Uh, yeah, well, the hole would be in the aluminium rails. Oh, uh, yeah, it would. But uh, I decided to drill this hole to connect it to a test rig. So uh, I'll just uh, connect it to the test rig and uh, show you how it uh, looks like. Now I have uh, connected the quadcopter to this uh, test rig. And the great thing about this test rig is that I'm capable of testing the movement when I'm going to make the motor turns because uh, with this I can make it move just one way but uh, without uh, flying away and as you can see it can actually also turn freely so uh, I can mount two motors and then I can add my electronics and to make it uh, and to see if it can stabilize on this without uh, damaging everything in my room because uh, of the, the movement and uh, suddenly the copter crashes so with this test rig, I'm able to uh, to test it uh, freely without uh, damaging anything. Hopefully, so uh, that is. Uh, I hope this is going to be a success. So uh, the next step for me is now to uh, connect the IMU uh, to the the sensor board to the electronics. Connect the STM uh, F4, and uh, I'll also got the ESCs running with uh, the STM F4, I made the PBM drivers, etc. And uh, for now it's just to make the so-called PID filter 
which is a regulation technique used to regulate the, the motor speeds. But I'll talk about that in another video. So uh, hopefully this uh, gave you a uh, bit of uh, idea of what I'm doing currently and the project that uh, I'm doing. And um, please uh, rate, comment and uh, subscribe. And if you have any questions, you are free to uh, contact me or write a comment on our blog where I will try to respond to you as quickly as possible. It is also possible, uh, no sorry, and I will also put out the the drawings of uh, this project so you can uh, start making your own and I'll also put out the bomb list etc. So uh, thank you for watching and I hope you uh, find uh, found this uh, video useful. Thank you.